Welcome to Change, sponsored by the Senior Bond of Schomburg, where nutritious meals, friendly peers, and social activities are available every day of the week. Under the able direction and guidance of Marina Lavovich, the cost and location are available to all. We seniors meet once a month to discuss the past and its influence on the present. And our program today is about fashions and styles. I'd like to introduce our panel. We have Renata Riccobon. She was born in Italy, lives in Schomburg, previously was an executive secretary, administrator, accountant, support rep, a meeting planner, <laughs> and part-time after retirement bridal consultant at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. And she also has her hands into gardening <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> in the spring of the year. Yes. She has two children and five grandchildren. Rosemary Colbert is born in Chicago, lives in Schomburg, and she previously was a railroad clerk, a clerk for Atchison, Topeka, and the Santa, Santa Fe, Fe. now <laughs> Burlington Northern, Northern Santa, Santa Fe. Fe. Since she re and now she's retired. She has six children and five grandchildren. And we have Alga Kosa, born in the Ukraine and now living in Schomburg. She previously worked for Kodak and is now retired. She has four children and eight grandchildren. And I am Lori Candle. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and I am a retired teacher, and I have two children and two grandchildren. <laughs> okay, welcome to all. Thank you. Fashions have changed through the years. The times, economics, and various moods of the public have caused this to happen. In the late 19th century, long skirts, bustles, and girdles were the norm of the time. As we moved into the 20th century, however, skirts became shorter, corsets were abandoned, and enter now into the Roaring Twenties with the arrival of the flapper. And there we had lower waistlines and shorter skirts. As movies began to dominate our culture in the 30s, the femininity of movie stars greatly influenced the uh, dress of the day. However, with the arrival of World War II in the 40s, dress material was not always available and a conservative dress mode became the norm. Post-war 50s, the femininity movement returned with the squirreling skirts and the crinolines. The 60s gave way to an era of tie-dye, t-shirt, hippie, casual movement, as well as simple attire. The 70s introduced the dress down Friday movement. And then in the 80s and 90s, brand name garments became the rage and a means of expression. As the 21st century arrived, the tone of anything goes arrived, oft times accompanied by less is more. <laughs> Our fashions will continue to change. And as we look back, we can smile at the memories they do invoke. Are there any fashions or styles that come to mind that you remember from your childhood that you wore? Rosemary? Well, yes. Um, I remember when we were little girls, um, Auntie Fran, well, she wasn't really my Auntie Fran, but a friend of, the, of my girlfriend's mother, they used to make crochet dresses oh, yes. for the little girls, mm -hmm. and then they used to put uh, cloth strings in their hair and curl and then they'd pull them out and they'd all have the long curls a la Shirley Temple uh, yeah. because she was very popular. The only difference is Shirley's were tighter, shorter curls where the ones I remember from the neighborhood was the long and I was so jealous because my mother always cut our hair <laughs> and I, I used to put corn, that silk from the corn and, and kind of pin it on my head so I could have longer hair, but you couldn't curl it so, but right. I do remember that. Right, and how about yeah. you? Um, when we were young, we didn't have much money, so I remember my mom would make most of our clothes. I am not sure they were the latest fashion, but um, 
Uh, my dad would bring home uh, pieces of fabric from where he worked or even sacks. I'm not sure what were made out of. And my mom would fashion something for us that we could wear. And uh, we always looked good. So was this in Italy now? No, it was in Brooklyn. In when Brooklyn. we moved to Brooklyn. Oh, oh yes, yeah, you're oh, a Brooklyn Although in Italy, they made, they made, I grew up in Brooklyn. Although <laughs> in Italy, they also, you sell them bar clothes. My mom was a seamstress. Mm -hmm. So was my aunt. So they made most of their clothes and our clothes. Right. And Alga, you had mentioned that your mother made most of your clothes. All my clothes. Mm-hmm. When I was a little girl. How did you feel when she made them for you? Were you happy or pleased? I or? was glad I had it. <laughs> okay. Was that during the war years? I was born almost... Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite dress at that time? Anything that I had. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have hand-me-downs or anything? No, I'm the only child, so whatever mom had, whatever she made, mm -hmm. and skirt and blouses, mm -hmm. and that was that. Well, that would I never complained about clothes. We were glad we had. I guess she was very happy about that. <laughs> yes. Well, was there any because must? I, oh, oh, excuse ahead. me. <laughs> no, no, let's go ahead. Were there any must wears that you, your mother insisted that you must wear? Well, you know, like during the war, if they didn't have elastic, so your underpants would have <laughs> string, and it would open up <laughs> while you're on the playground, <laughs> and. Then, but I do remember that uh, uh, everything was cotton, either that or it was dry cleanable. And cotton meant you had to dampen it all and roll it up and put it in the refrigerator but, and then take it out and iron it. There was no such thing as steam irons. And I do remember what a chore that was and how everybody hated to iron with five girls. And of course, I wore nothing but hand-me-downs. <laughs> <laughs> what about well, you, Renata? I didn't either, um, but. <laughs> I mean, must wear, I do not remember when I was a small child in Italy, but when we came, I remember for Easter we had to have a hat and a purse. I remember that a little tiny basket, and it was like you went to the, one of the cheaper stores, you couldn't afford to go to the expensive ones, and we'd buy the little straw hat and then the purse, and uh, if we could, gloves. They were very important. Even gloves. when we were young, it was mm -hmm. ladylike yes. to wear gloves. Well, it is. it says fashion is about dressing according mm. to what's fashionable, and style is more about being yourself. That's Oscar de la Renta who said that. And Coco Chanel added, fashion fades, but only style remains the same. We'll be back after a very short break. Thank you. We're getting some very interesting memories, and uh, as Renata just said, she couldn't speak and say everything she wanted <laughs> to say, but maybe we'll get it in in this next session. Uh, in what way do styles of today differ from your upbringing that you had? Olga, and since you were in the Ukraine, it's probably a big difference. Well, actually, yes. In what way? Because we really didn't have much. In 1942, we were moved to Germany with my mom, and I worked for a German family, and she actually made, she said she didn't have, someone gave her the dresses. She took up her daughter's dresses and made it for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I really didn't have no fashion, and Whatever I got, I was happy. And today you go to the store and you just no, go I, through the racks. No, I make my own. <laughs> oh, you do? Yes, a lot of them I make my own. Oh. Dresses Isn't that and wonderful? Hey, if we need any repairing, <laughs> we know where to go. <laughs> Renata, how can... about you? Yes. Um, I think the difference is that back then, uh, now it's a lot looser, the clothing. It's a lot more casual. Mm -hmm. I remember back then, um, we'd have to watch what we would wear. It would have mm -hmm. to be decent. It would have to cover. Uh, now, today, 
anything goes. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest difference that I see that something we've lost along the way as far as modesty, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good I word. So. Girdles, too. Remember yes, those I remember things? That. Yeah. <laughs> How about but you? I Ruby? remember the Playtex rubber girdles in the early 50s. And if you got a cotton itch, there went your girdle, <laughs> which happened to my girlfriend. And they used to hold her stockings up. But I remember from the late 40s and early 50s, cardigans that the girls mm -hmm. used to reverse. Mm -hmm. I remember the saddle shoes with the socks. I remember the penny loafers that they put the penny on the top of the shoe. But, uh, and I think that's when nylon first came out, because I remember the first year of high school, the color chartreuse in a, in a, a what do you call that, one of those jackets, those, uh, you what know, uh, no, no, it was just one of those windbreakers, oh, okay. and it was this bright chartreuse, and it was made with nylon, and that was the very first thing I remember about <coughs> having a synthetic yeah. fabric. Oh, because yeah. prior to that, everything was a natural fabric. Right. Even the stockings in the 40s yes, were the were cotton, cotton stockings yes, where yes, you painted yes. your legs yes. if you didn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, well, that was with the nylons because yes. they didn't have the silk stockings because they used for parachute, parachutes. They had right. to make the parachutes. Right. And how about, yeah. can you add anything to that? The only thing I can add is that the fabric uh, was simpler back then. It was mostly cottons, cottons. linens. Mm -hmm. You had to mm -hmm. iron everything. And, everything. This, and today, there were so many synthetics. I, I don't iron anymore. I throw I it in the dryer. It. <laughs> and hang it. So that is the main difference, the fabrics. And I don't think the fabrics last as long as they did years ago. I think they uh, fall apart quicker. And I don't think clothes are made as well as they were years ago either. Mm -hmm. Could That's I add difference. something to yes. that, Renata? You know what I think the difference is? I remember in the... Or 60s, let's say, when they started coming out with polyester and cotton blends. And you know, to this, to this day, I'm a cotton polyester girl. I don't care. It keeps the color. You don't have to iron, and it's so comfortable. It keeps the shape so. Do you go along with that, Olga? Yes, I came to the United States in 1950, and but they, I don't remember what happened before, but I do remember <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> I can well imagine, but the, the yes. synthetic fabric. Yes, and polyester are, was yeah. the greatest to yeah. work with, mm -hmm. to sew with, yeah, it didn't, uh, it didn't wash it. It didn't, what do you call that, fray at the edges or anything? Mm -hmm. It was um, right, that, it was marvelous. That was marvelous. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to cut it, you just mm -hmm. sewed it. Yes, absolutely. It, it's so interesting, the difference <laughs> that you mentioned, the materials yeah, of the clothes. And that's Definitely. when Levi's became popular yeah. in the yeah. early 50s mm -hmm. with the cuff at the bottom. You, they've even got movies of the youngsters, the, the boys <coughs> in, from that era where they have the blue jeans with the cuffs right. on the bottom. We used to call them dungarees. They, they well, were we call yeah. them Levi's. Right, work. right. Yeah. And I remember I was uh, 14 at the time, and my dad would not allow me to wear any dungarees because they were not ladylike. I was not allowed to wear them. We were not allowed to wear it in school. We could not wear anything but skirts for girls. Mm -hmm. Had to be, and this is public school. And then there was the coal strike. Um, I believe it was 52, and all of a sudden we were allowed to wear slacks. <gasps> we were in our glory. <laughs> well, you know what? I can remember when the pantsuits came out in mm. the 70s, and the first time I put it on, my principal turned his back on me <laughs> because I was wearing a pantsuit, not a dress. <laughs> oh, I love oh. pantsuits. It was hard for people, some people, to adjust yes. to the change in the uh, fashions. Mm -hmm. Did you have any challenges with your children as they were growing up and the styles changed and you didn't really approve of them or maybe you did approve of them. You know what? I'll be honest. I have not, don't remember any challenges. I mean, no. um, they, we used to go to Kmart mm -hmm. and uh, those stores that were Sears. expensive, Sears, mm -hmm. and whatever they had. Um, and of course, the styles were different then than they are now. The children did not wear, you know, midriff tops or things like that. Mm -hmm. So, no, I can't say I had many challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. We bought what we could afford, and they had to wear it. And no brand and consciousness at no, the time. Not it would, not you know, then. nothing was de rigueur mm -hmm. that, oh, you have to have, what's his name, uh, Kevin Klein, Klein on the label. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, oh, I had none trouble of that. with Cavaricis. 
Did Ma, know. everybody in school See, is wearing Cavaricis, and I'm what wearing is jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Olga, how about you with your children? Any challenges? Um, not really. They mm -hmm. really didn't have choice. <laughs> we were mm -hmm. lucky, our age, yeah. with Because our I kids. send my children to the Catholic uh, oh, uniforms. uniform all the time, so they can't complain that they had mm. different ones. Correct. And the, re uh, the regular clothes, if I made them, if I could afford it to buy them, and that's what they were. I really didn't have no problem with that. Well, that is good. That's a blessing there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, it seems that, you know, times have really changed, and I think you people have very nicely adapted <laughs> to it. You probably have some daring there things There was no at choice. <laughs> I didn't have it. No, I've never been daring. <laughs> and, and my kids did go to Catholic school also, when that helped, because they yeah, did that wear the uniform. Yeah. Well, if, uh, Giorgio Armani said the difference between between style and fashion is quality. And it's once true. we watch that and keep ourselves on that trend, things go along on the regular mm -hmm. trend. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back to discuss more. Well, we've all adjusted to changing times and uh, things will continue to change. Do you think there's any truth in the statement that what goes around comes around as referring to fashion? Yes. Have you found any in Olga, you're saying yes. In what way? <laughs> A lot of changes. What goes around comes around. Yeah. Right. In what way do, would you say you can prove it? How I can prove it? With the styles, with uh, bringing up even the family or, you know, the neighbor, you get, you got to learn, especially me. I came 1950, where some of them already were here, and then I had to learn the language, I have to go to work, I had mm -hmm. to know what it is. And some of the clothes And get married and, right. and make my own clothes and look what they have. Yeah. Some of them even gave it to me. Right. Is, well, because I can, they saw I didn't have it, so hey, I'll go, you can wear it, mm -hmm. because I don't want it. So right. it was a goodwill. When I came, it was like... <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess it was kind of different, you know, there, because I can it's remember a, my... Um, a friend of mine, the, the husband, had a tweed coat <laughs> that was popular in the 50s. Did it have and that? he was wearing it in the 90s, yeah, and he exactly. was so proud of it. Can you think of anything and like that? And it looked so good. Mm -hmm. It was. It was still good. Well, I think of the short skirts. They were short oh. many years ago, and now they're short again. <laughs> yes. um, we wore leggings years ago, and now the leggings came back. A lot of fashion uh, comes back. Coming. Yeah, and I think because there's only so much you can do with fashion, I mean, eventually you have to repeat and something. That's, and that's where Coco, that's, that's mm -hmm. how what Coco remains re relevant even now because we saw a girl that represented her at Hoffman Estates, and that was, they showed actual pictures of outfits that she had created that they have made now as something new in, their, in all the stores. And they have recycled it. Yes. Yeah. I think you know now it's coming back what it was in the 50s, right. and 60s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mad Men, now the fashions are coming back from Mad Men. Why do you Men. think styles change so frequently? Because people Why? get, what? get um, bored with what they have. They want something new. I have a closet full of boredom. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Also, that's my theory <laughs> on it, yeah. What do you think? I, I also, no, but I think that's money making, you know, yeah. the manufacturing. That. That's See, that is an important point. Mm -hmm. I mean, people want to make money. Hmm? Exactly. And different people have different ideas in their head about what is fashionable. You know, it's like if the newer, the newer fashion. Um, Creators now, their 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 ideas are are shaped by what's going on now as compared to what took place, you know, like a hundred years ago. So that's going to be reflected in how they develop their clothes mm -hmm. well, and what's available as far as material too would make a difference. Well, they have a lot of fashions. Uh, 
graduating and they right. want to show mm -hmm. what they can do, right. which is mm -hmm. good too. Right. So we have to accommodate the uh, right. young exactly. people that are if coming up with their fit, ideas. Fit <laughs> yes, yes, right, yes. right. Yes. Uh, what do you think the future holds for fashion? I hope it doesn't get any skimpier. <laughs> I mean, especially these. This is, you know, you got to put lace in everything when you buy it because everything is too low. No, right. this is again, I think, in that it's newspapers and yeah. more push, and, and that's a different fashion yeah. what they do and, and not what it was before. And everything is for skinny teenagers. Well, of course, they want everybody to be skinny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's another thing. I mean, it's the uh, the size. We were seeing yeah. all these models that are, you know, twiggy type. Right. But now they're they putting some, some flesh ones. on oh, it. Yes. Yeah. There's and some. there are... They were too skinny. Right. That's what else has changed, though, is sizing. Because do you remember when we were growing up, well, and becoming, uh, you know, adults, let's say, uh, a size six or an eight was considered, I mean, you would be a hundred pounds and you'd wear a size eight, now you'd be a zero. You know, <laughs> get real. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there is one store that the only sizes they have are one, two, and three. Yeah. No, and it makes you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a one. <laughs> I was comparing it, the sizes before, Always had it like 11, 12, 13. Yeah. Now you have an 8, and I could fit it in that <laughs> one too. <laughs> well, you could probably fit in it. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's an interesting fact. But they don't fact, have those right? sizes. Well, one of the best quotes mm -hmm. for the future of fashion is, one is never overdressed or underdressed with a little black dress. Mm -hmm. And that was Karl Lagerfeld that said that. But we're going to take just a little bit of a, a trip into the food world right. where oh, we can oh, be she... entertaining and learn. And all you would need would be skewers. You need some grapes. Mm -hmm. You would need, I use jelly beans because they had white in it. Peanut butter. My favorite. Olives. Yeah. Cheese. Mm -hmm. That's important. Oh, she brought uh, a refrigerator. I have everything here. <laughs> and most important, if you want your little ones to see, oh. you need this. Okay. Well, now you're going to see the finished product. And Renata's very carefully going to bring it oh. up. Oh, we have thank our you. little animals <laughs> that we can put on top of hors d'oeuvres or whatever we would truly like. They're easy to make, fast to make, I and love kids it. love them. Get them to you, eat their vegetables at Come this on. time. What is the white eye? Uh, I use jelly beans for the and eyes. And you sliced them. And okay. Yeah, because they, I couldn't find anything, you know, small enough. Mm -hmm. And How then I the use the, but the very little. The icing writing this for is, everything this else. Is, so this, oh, that's, that's, that's a lady. jelly bean. And it's a ladybug. That's yeah. the ladybug. This is a ladybug. And it's made right. with the jelly beans, Some right? Ladybug. And, and tomatoes. Just for the eyes. But the easiest to make, and kids love it, are the ones made with the skewers. This so. It's just a fun way, a style of decorating <laughs> your food. Oh, well, we'd you. like to thank everybody for coming today. And I, we think we really learned a lot. I mean, brought back a lot of memories for me. And we'd like to invite everyone to come to the barn and enjoy the meals that we have. We had yesterday the National Night Out, and it was a fantastic yeah. night. There are many activities. There is a salad bar. There is a menu. And just call the barn and make a reservation and come and enjoy our companionship. May God bless you and God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.